You spent a career as a plasterer. Now you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma and you're wondering how it is that you got this terrible disease. Hi, I'm Joe Williams. I'm a mesothelioma trial attorney in New York City and I certainly can answer these questions for you. We know that plasterers dealt with plaster every day of their working career. And back in the 50s and 60s and before that time, interior structural walls in commercial buildings and in residential as well were made with plaster. And that means, as you know, that wire lath was installed on, uh, within the wall and the plaster was a dry mixed product mixed with water and applied to the lath and allowed to dry, then sanded down. And the amount of dust created from that sanding was tremendous in the workspace of every worker on that job site. And we know that many of these plaster products back in that time frame contained asbestos. Sometime in the 60s, some of the building materials changed. And we went from plaster walls to sheetrock walls. And that's, of course, what's in use today. The sheetrock uh, nailed or screwed, used to be nailed, now they're screwed to the studs. And they used to be wood studs, now they're mostly metal studs. Between the seams of the sheetrock, a product called joint compound was used to seal and smooth the walls in those areas. And also for all of the nail or screw holes where the sheetrock was attached to the studs. And the joint compound on large construction sites was usually a dry product that was mixed with water and applied to the seams of the sheetrock and to the screw or nail holes. Additionally, that joint compound came in a premixed compound which was in a bucket or a can and it was already wet and it was applied to the wall in the same way on the seams of the sheetrock or on the screw or nail holes. And whether it started wet or dry, eventually it was made wet and put on the walls and allowed to dry. And once it dried, it had to be sanded smooth. And multiple coats of this process were done and sanded down, all creating a lot of asbestos dust that plasterers and workers breathe. So these are many of the ways that a plasterer would have been exposed to asbestos dust on a work site. Now I'm sure you have many other questions about your work and how it could have caused you to be exposed to asbestos. Well, we have the answers. I'm Joe Williams. I invite you to call my office at the number below and we can discuss your case and the way you were exposed to asbestos. We handle mesothelioma cases every day. We represent the victims of asbestos exposure each and every day and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you.